hello and welcome to the channel today we're going to look at how to audit leases and we're going to be looking at how we audit that through ifrx system okay so just so you know the audit of leases is a bit complex or a bit technical than the audit of ppe property plant and equipment and this is because of the new ifrs system which was introduced we used to have is 17 but because of ifrs 16 it makes the audit of leases a bit complex so now we have our audit uh, we have our audit working paper okay so um here we're going to put the company name the right what we are auditing we are auditing the right of use asset and then the year end so now we have we're going to state the purpose what is the purpose of this working paper so we are trying to gain assurance over the ifrs 16 balances okay over ifrs 16 balances relating to the right of use asset lease liability and then the expenses so what is the assertion we are concerned about so when we are auditing leases the assertion we are concerned about is valuation as the client properly you know recognize the leases in accordance with ifrs 16 is it valued properly so valuation is our main assertion so what are the procedures assuming you're going to perform audit of lease right away what are some things you need to do or assuming you're in an examination and you you are asked to write some procedures for the audit of leases what are some things you can write so we are going to obtain the client's calculation of the right of use asset and the lease liability schedule the client has to provide us with that okay they have to provide us with the lease liability schedule okay and we're going to agree the lease schedule to the lease agreement so once we have the lease schedule you're also going to obtain the lease agreement from the client because that is also going to form part of your audit evidence and then you need the lease agreement to be able to to in order to get all the information you need regarding the lease you're also going to obtain management's memo management has to prepare a memo because of the new ifrs 16 we want to see how management has applied the guidance of ifrs 16 so an example of a memo can be something like this so we said note this memo is prepared by management on the assessment of ifrs 16 so the client is going to give us a brief background about the lease so what is the lease about you know when did the lease start uh, what is the amount that is involved so they are going to you know put a conclusion after you know f showing us how they have applied each of the guidance okay so the client is going to go through the guidance of ifrs 16 and they are going to put a comment to show how they've applied each of these guidance so the writing in blue is for us the auditors so we are going to put our own comment to say if we agree with management analysis or not so can you see for each of the guidance management has to provide a comment to show us how they have applied this so remember to obtain a management memo from your client if you are performing the audit of leases okay so let's go back to our working paper so once we have that um memo for management we are going to perform an analysis okay we as the auditor we need to also perform our own analysis of ifrs 16 okay based on what management has written in their memo and this is where i'm going to be performing my own analysis okay can you see so uh what is the next step we are going to perform recalculation of the lease liability so remember we have the lease liability schedule so what are we going to do to that schedule we need to perform recalculation of the lease liability and then we are going to agree to the general ledger so for the lease liability these are several components that we are going to be auditing we need to perform recalculation on the right of use assets and then when we do that we are going to agree to what the client has on their gl that's their general ledger and then we are going to check is there any difference between our calculation and then between what the client has on their general ledger we are also going to uh, perform recalculation of the lease liability the amortization on the right of use assets and then the interest on the lease liability so for each of these components we are going to recalculate and then agree to the client's general ledger so let's start with the right of use asset okay so before we do that i'm going to show you quickly how i perform my ifrs 16 analysis 
So I said the purpose of this analysis is to determine the impact of the application of IFRS 16. So the first thing I did was to look, does the lease qualify for exemption? So you need to properly understand your IFRS 16, okay? So I, I looked at the lease agreement and I saw that this lease does not qualify for the exemption, okay? In that case, I concluded that the equipment lease is a capital lease, okay, under the scope of IFRS 16. So once I'm sure of that, then I can now go on to perform my analysis right here. But assuming this lease qualifies for exemption, in that case, the client can record it as an operating lease, not as a capital lease, okay? So I came to this other side, and then I took this information from the lease agreement. So in your lease agreement, there's going to be a monthly lease payment. But apart from that, there might be an initial direct cost. In that case, we are going to be adding that initial direct cost to the total cost of our right of use asset. So you need to check your lease agreement for any initial direct cost that you can find. Okay. And then you also need to determine the interest rate. The interest rate is not going to be stated in the um, lease agreement. You might not see this stated. So you have to use your professional judgment. So in this case, I had to I had to use my you know professional judgment to determine the interest rate that is the incremental borrowing cost. Okay. So I looked at the interest rate that um, the bank gives the client for loan. And then I also performed a form of sensitivity analysis, okay, on the interest rate. So I, I said if I'm going to be using 4.53 as my interest rate, what if I decide to use 7.45? What will be the difference? Or what if I decide to use 8.45? So in your own case, you can decide to try anything, okay? So I tried these options in order to see if there will be any big difference, but you can see there was no big difference the difference was not material okay so i that was how i determined the interest rate and then you can from the lease agreement you need to determine the term so in this case it was 12 months and you also need to determine the monthly lease payment and then if there was any bargain purchase option in the agreement so you need to bring out those information here so that anybody that picks up your working paper can see you know at at a glance all of the information so now that we have our analysis done and we are sure that this is a capital list we can now perform our recalculation so this is the schedule that was prepared by management so the first thing i'm going to do is to determine the right of use assets so we are going to first determine the acquisition cost we are going to do this by performing you know by performing a calculation of the present value so that was what we did here you can see the present value and then we used all of these we used the pv function in excel to determine our present value so once we have that we added the order cost remember in our analysis i said you have to look for any initial direct cost on the lease agreement so we added the cost here to get the total cost of the asset okay and we also need to determine the amortization because in our in our FS, we are going to record the asset, you know, at its current value, that is the total cost less amortization. So since the lifetime is 10 years, and we also used our professional judgment to determine this, so we calculated the amortization, okay, monthly amortization. The lease started on June 4, so this monthly amortization times, you know, the number of months from June 1st to December 31st, okay. So that is what we have here. So that was how we got our total amortization. And this was the cost we got 673753. 673753. Okay, so we compared that to what the client has on their GL. Okay, so if we deduct the amortization from the cost, this is what we have. So we have to compare it to what the client has on the GL. And you can see there is no difference, which is good. So that is how you can perform your recalculation of the right of use asset okay so nice we are going to determine um the list liability so to, to determine the list liability you have to you know come up with your amortization schedule okay and that you are going to be using your present value okay so the payment amount and then you are going to keep reducing 
your obligation so as at the end of the year which we're auditing the least liability balance was 145 okay so just remember you need your amortization schedule to perform your least liability so we had a balance of 445 per hour recalculation so let's see what is in the client's gl the client also has 145,000 as their lease liability so in that case there's no difference and for the right of use asset amortization we already calculated that okay remember i said we multiplied the monthly amortization times the number of months you know of that lease from when the lease started to the year end we are auditing so that is good and then lastly we have to determine perform our recalculation on the interest on lease liability so let's see that here how did we perform our recalculation okay so this is um what the client has done for their own interest calculation and then this is for us the auditors so we all we needed to do was to divide the total was to divide the total um present value sorry to multiply the interest rate by the outstanding balance okay at the beginning of the period okay and then we are going to divide by what by 12 so that is how you are going to get your monthly interest expense okay so we performed from uh, when the list started to the year end okay so the total interest expense we got was this and according to the client in their gl they also have 9268.78 so can you see in this case there was no difference so the client's calculation was okay but in a case where there is any difference you need to um, determine if that difference is material if it's material then you need to discuss with the client because they might need to adjust their calculation okay so I, like i said in the beginning the audit of lease can be a bit complex but you know if you follow this process this can actually help you to simplify the process so remember you have to audit each of the components separately the right of use asset the lease liability the amortization and then the interest on lease expense to so always remember to get all the things you need remember to get the schedule from the client remember to get the management memo remember to get the lease agreement and then remember to also perform your own analysis okay that way you'll be able to perform your recalculation so this is it on the audit of leases today i want to thank you very much for watching the video today i'm going to see you in my next video and bye